I'm Leanne Shea, Executive Editor for Aviation Week, and I'm here with Andre Stein at the Chicago Vertiport. Andre is the co-CEO of EVE Air Mobility, and you just started a trial here in Chicago uh, to test uh, advanced air mobility. So can you tell us what's going on and what you're trying to achieve during these tests? Absolutely. So when you're talking about urban air mobility, one thing we do understand that it's all about the ecosystem. It's not only about the aircraft. The EVTOL, EVTOL it's a disruptive new type of vehicle, but it's much more than that. You need to understand how the whole operation is going to work. And it's through simulations like what we're doing here in Chicago using an existing machine, ex uh, existing helicopter, that you can understand that, how the user journey is going to be, how the integration of the ground transportation is going to be, how the integration of the airspace is going to be. So we are using these simulations to create this blueprint, this framework, that will shape future operations, but also shape our vehicles, our service, or if the, the understanding of the real world. Well, it, it obviously gets very cold here in Chicago, places like New York, which is different than some of the trials you're doing, such as in Miami, where you don't have to worry about snow in the winter. So when you're looking and you're evaluating the infrastructure here, including an all-electric vehicle, um, you know, what are some of the challenges from an infrastructure standpoint? So that's a, a very valid point. So we, electrical vehicles, as you know, do have different uh, characteristics than traditional vehicles, but even for traditional aviation, snow and storms are always a challenge. We, we are doing these trials here in Chicago during the summer, so th we are not trying that specifically on this trial, but it, as we are talking with the infrastructure and with the providers of the vert ports, they have learned a lot on their real operation as well. So it's the same rationale of trying to understand the problem as we bring up solutions. Uh, in particular for icing conditions, new technologies are being developed on that, how you can do that with electrical um, both bonders and batteries, how they will behave. So there's a, a lot of uh, room to cover on that. But uh, places like Chicago represent a good part of the market, so you're gonna need to bring solutions for that. Chicago itself has a capacity for over 200 EVTOLs, the way you see 240 flying around 150 routes around the city, maybe 20 vert ports. So it is a massive potential that cannot be ignored, right? But uh, in terms of uh, entrance service, places like LA, Miami are, are easier in a, in a certain way. So we just flew in a helicopter from Tinley Park, a vertiport, into the Chicago vertiport downtown Chicago here. But you also have a, a landing pad that you're using in Schaumburg. And so trying out you know, different types of landing spaces. So what are the differences between you know, Schaumburg's operation opposed to like vertiport, where you, you know, you, Schaumburg, you don't have all of the infrastructure charging so that, that's a, a very good point, and we are doing that by design and purpose. So here, uh, in this location, Vertport Chicago, we're flying out a full, complete Vertport with all the facilities. We are here sitting in uh, these very nice facilities. But uh, that's not necessarily always going to be the case. So here we have that in uh, Tinland Park. We are using a, a small Vertport based in a container to see how that could work, including things that are going to need safety checks on your uh, experience that there, right? So how that's going to be if you need to have some screening before in different locations. Then in Schaumburg, we pretty much have anything. We are actually operating out of uh, just having a little uh, sedan park it there, to electric one for that matter, just to keep on uh, the sustainability aspect to it. So you don't have not even that. And, and, and then again, understanding Okay, how is going to be there? How are you going to integrate? How the passenger, who's going to uh, host the passenger when he arrives if you don't have all this infrastructure? And what's the real need? What's like the minimum that you need to have for this to work? We are not verticalizing vertports, and we believe that they will be agnostic, so they need to be for all the different vehicles that will be parking there, be it EV tolls or even drones, sharing that space. But, but again, there will be different uh, structure levels, there will be different sizes, not unlike what you see with airports today, right? You're going to see vert ports that have several landing spots, how that's going to work. Uh, some hub, some spokes, we're going to have just one, much smaller infrastructure. Again, as you bring that real life experience to the actual vehicle and the serves that go along with it, that help us to create the right, the right solutions. 
And uh, you know, Eve has done. I guess there's the first concept of operation was done in, in Rio de Janeiro, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got one underway in Miami. There's been some in you know, London, Singapore. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the key differences that you're learning these concept of operations between the cities? So, to on that, we have uh, act simulations using helicopters. We have done the first one in Rio last year. We are doing here, but beyond that, we are doing the concept of operations the discussion with the community, with the stakeholders, and different ones, and then. That's the case of Miami, London, Japan. Uh, there are differences on the uh, traffic management system, so we, they're not necessarily going to be one solution for all of that. On the flight here, we're talking about the Bravo airspace here in the US, how it works. In other areas, we have more of dedicated corridors, and we need to have solutions that integrate. So there are differences. The user experience, it's different. The expectations are different. Even the, uh, and even when it comes to the weather, like in the winter, we can solve the machine, but then we have people carrying heavy coats and so on. How that's going to work? So the the the, the user behavior it's different. Ge geographies are different. Some towns have more right rising, and we are flying here in uh, in Chicago, and we are talking about that as well. Like the, it's all flat ground, so it's much easier to find uh, vertport spaces all over the town. In some places, it's a bit harder, more high rise buildings. So all that, it is different, but there's definitely a common backbone. And that's what we're trying to achieve. How, what is the blueprint that you can replicate? And doing a second simulation, it, it is very interesting to see that uh, the common things. And more than just the city, in Rio we've done, uh, specifically the airport shuttle user case, right? So we were flying people in and out the airport there. Here we are looking at the commuting use case. So we are not flying to O'Hare by design. Of course, for the for the market, that's a very important market. It took me two and a half hours to go from the airport downtown, downtown when I arrived here. But we are trying to understand the difference between that, that has some very specific points, where you're going to land inside the airport, it's going to be airside or not, with the commuting use case. Are people actually using that just to fly around town? The answer so far has been an overwhelming yes. Uh, we have a very high occupational uh, a load factor already, so you're actually selling tickets for about the pricing point. We believe uh, it will be there for the beginning of the operation, around hundred dollars for each mission. Here, they are around thirty miles by by ground or twenty miles by air, and that again uh, shows that difference in things like price elasticity, uh, user behavior, the the airspace, uh, not only the the conditions but the uh, regulatory environment. That will be different from different countries. But the backbone, the blueprint is there and tends to be common. That sounds good. At Farnborough, Eva uh, announced the uh, first full mock-up of the interior. Uh, what is, when should we expect the first flight? Is it still on track? We're going to enter in service in 2026, mm -hmm. right? So, and that's one lesson we've learned from previous problems. That's where we need to put our focus. And we, we are building the, the building blocks, assuring that we're not moving backwards or not uh, just find something for to show the investors or anything like that. So we are really on track. So yes, we are absolutely on track for that entrance service. That sounds good. Well, Andre, thanks so much You're for welcome. your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.